Friends, this is what we have to become. It's not complicated. Algorithm busters, right? Algorithm busters. What the heck is this about? What is he talking about? What has he come up with? Now, everything that these companies do, and I'm not just making this up like, okay, come up with this new idea, let's put it out there. No, um, I work with a lot of engineers myself, right? I, I, once upon a time, um, 2003 till about 2010, I probably had about 50 engineers on my payroll, uh, probably another 50 salespeople on my payroll. Um, right now, probably six engineers on my payroll. And um, when you hire talent, and I, sure, I, I don't pay the Uber or Lyft rates and pay $190,000 for an engineer. No, that's not me, right? But um, for example, in Hyderabad, I paid a group years and years back. I set up an office there, 25 computers, and work with engineers. I've worked with this mentality. I was married to this mentality in the past, so I do understand what engineers are about, how they think. And there are many of these individuals that I can call upon in a heartbeat, right? And when I talk to um, engineers, it's it's a whole different thinking, you know, zero one 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 zero 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 one one one, a uh, whole different mindset talking to engineers, how to manage them, how to work with them. But at the end of the day, Uber and Lyft are looking at every single trip around the globe, whether it's Los Angeles, whether it's in Berlin, Germany, whether it's in Tokyo, Japan, whether it's in New York, New York, right? They're looking at every little bit of data and they pay an army, no, we pay an army of engineers, right? The drivers and gig workers pay an army of engineers to write algorithms, right? And algorithms are basically, okay, here's the data. How do we manipulate the data? to extract the most from the rider and from the driver. It's all these different data sets, rider data, driver data, they analyze it and they will really figure out how to milk the cow, right? How to extract every little ounce of milk from the cow. And the one thing I'm not happy about, right? And I'm sure you are not happy about, and by the way, chime in, chime in, right? leave your comments, is that when they take our data and use it against us, right? Use that data against us to extract the maximum. So when you are in this behavioral pattern of doing trips throughout the day, guess what? You have a group of engineers that's collecting your data and the data of the person driving down the, stroad, down the road next to you, and the data of the food delivery guy who's busy making a delivery in that and that city, right? Every little snippet of data is hyper-analyzed and used against us. Chris B is in the house. Um, now, when I use the term algorithm busters, look, there's a few ways you can rise up as an army of gig workers. And there's millions of us worldwide, right? You can protest and strike. Now, protest and strikes are very, very effective if and when everyone, good evening, my friend, Asaf's in the high desert, shout out to you, California. If and when all gig, gig workers work together. Sadly, as we know, gig workers are not always all on the same page. So there are some gig workers They'll say, okay, strike, here's an opportunity to send the company a message. We call in the media, we, 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 we connect with the public, and yes, it is successful, but is it bringing about change? Change comes when we all act together, right? If we were all to strike simultaneously for 48 hours, all hell would break loose, right? But we don't. Because there's always the desperados and the desperate people say, well, you know what, I'm going to ignore the strike and I'm going to ignore this protest and I'm going to keep on driving. But when you look on algorithms and you guys have all heard this, right? We really have to 
and, and, and this comes after having a meeting um, with a group of engineers, right, that one of my friends manages. And if the algorithms are designed to work against you, to extract from you, for the company, you have to be able to bust up the algorithm. Now, what I'm open for um, are suggestions. How would you break an algorithm? How would you break the pattern of data that they are collecting? For example, let me give you an example. If you were driving and if you were static standing somewhere, right, um, maybe taking a five minute rest or doing a couple of stretches or going for a meal and switch off, right? You don't really want to sign off the app um, when you are driving because that could bring in insurance issues if you were to have an accident, right? So there are different phases of the insurance, whether you're on the job, out doing a delivery, out doing a trip or on the app, on the clock, right? and you get into an accident. So I'm not encouraging people to break the algorithms, right? And uh, while you are driving, because that, that's basically a recipe for disaster, because you could get yourself into a lot of insurance problems, right? I don't want that to happen. But if you can pull, up, pull over, sign out, sign on, sign out, sign on, just con constantly break up the algorithms, meaning at that specific time, in a certain area, in a certain neighborhood, in a certain city, in a certain zip code, they are figuring out what's going on here. People are signing out, signing in, signing out, signing in. So that's a, it's a really, really good way to really disrupt the data, signing out, signing in, right? Um, user triple zero says we need an app that's like a union for any category or industry across the world so everyone has a profile with identity check with a background so we could all go on strike for the same time frame. Love it. Linda's in the house, Florida. Chris is in the house. Brian Watkins in the house. Uh, we've got a lot of good people in the house. Fareed's in the house. Stella's in the house. Um, do leave your name. Give us a shout out. But if you come up with suggestions on how we can break algorithms, right? For example, disrupting uh, the data, signing out for five minutes, meaning you, 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 you're creating um, a hot zone because, oh, wow, there's suddenly there's not many drivers in this area, right? Because then maybe they think you've stopped the shift or and, and, and surges go up. They try to make it attractive, right? And you're signing back in and, you, and you're really heating up the colors, the reds and the oranges, heating it up. We have to really artificially break up the algorithms. Now, another really good way to do this is maybe on your last trip when you actually say stop new requests, right? And it's not like, hey, I've done with my day. I'm going to stop any new requests, right? Um, I'm, I'm signing out. I'm done. And I click the button, tap all caps, stop new request button. This circular button will be found at the bottom of your screen and will be marked with a white hand on a red background just below the button. It will say stop new request. You know that you know that button, right? Now you you could you could again cheat the algorithm by playing around with these stop new requests, right? What stops you from hitting the button? And the algorithm thinks, okay, well, this person's done with the day or doesn't want any further requests. We're not going to send them. We're not going to send them another a trip, right? But everybody's doing this. In synchronicity, everybody is either signing off or stopping new requests. And you're constantly breaking down the algorithm. You're breaking up the algorithms because you're basically confusing their data. How many people are on the grid? Oh, wow, there's suddenly less people on the grid, right? Now there's more people on the grid, right? So we, the, the ability to break up data or, or to maybe even create even hotter and hotter zones because people have checked out either because they've signed out or, or that because they've said stop new requests, right? We are artificially, right? And it's definitely not something we should be proud of, but it's something we have to do because the companies are doing this against us, right? They are writing algorithms based on our behavior 
and using that against us. So what you basically have to say is you have to switch. You have to switch the tables on them and break up their data. Meaning, I'm going to stop new requests. I'm going to sign out. I'm going to sign back in, right? So that suddenly the data that they're looking at is like, oh my God, what is going on down there, right? And they are reacting to our, to basically to our app um, decisions. What are we deciding on the app? Are we driving happily for six or eight hours and then ending the day, right? It means one driver drops out, there's one less person on the grid. They're controlling every little move that we make. But if we are constantly, constantly breaking up these algorithms, confusing their grid, signing in, signing out, stopping requests, starting requests, going back on again, then stopping new requests, right? Just breaking it up. Think along those lines. And I invite any driver or food delivery driver to put forward ideas how we can bust up these algorithms. Because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, right, we're out here to make money, right? And as long as we get into that hamster wheel and they control us with the algorithm, they are making the money. We're on the downside. Right here, Road Warrior Rick, on the lift, app sign out after every ride accepted and selling back yet. Okay, I need you to explain that. I, 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 I trust Road Warrior Rick. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a legend to me, right? He's been in this game for so, so long. Just, just elaborate on that. Any person that has ideas how we can break down these algorithms, if we are not out there striking and protesting, we have to figure out ways. We've had these things, people collaborating, uh, drivers collaborating at airports, driving up the surges, right? Maybe uh, Leonardo Espinal in the house. Saludos. How are you, my friends? Good to see you. Good, good to see you. Happy Sunday night. And uh, next week, I hope you all have a marvelous uh, week ahead, right? Monday is tomorrow, new week. And... Um, Go in with the mindset, hey, how can I disrupt the algorithms? I am super, super excited to hear your ideas. Uh, right here, Road Warriors, Rick says, that way they can't jam unwanted rides down your throat. Okay, I like that. Hello from Nashville, Tennessee. Hustle Shark, I like that name, Hustle Shark. Great name, by the way. Um, Leonardo, good to see you as well, my friend. Uh, user 000 says, I drive a rental and I notice the app will take me to the edges where the hot zone isn't because no drivers go out there, but I kind of have no choice since I'm in a rental per se. Okay, knowing that, right, knowing that, how would you disrupt that, right? Can you think of ways of, dis of, of, of disrupting the algorithm? If we can all work together, and follow a protocol multiple times a day, it's not gonna affect our earnings, right? If, if anything, it's gonna drive our earnings up because the more we interfere with the algorithms and show that there are not that many drivers on the grid, the more they have to offer us. People have shown us at airports that they can drive up their earnings by working in syndicates, right? By working in groups together. We need to think smart here. We need to outsmart these companies that are paying these engineers. Remember, the engineers are paid by people that are analyzing the data, right? It is not necessarily the engineers that they are the genius ones. They are, they are following our code. They're programming. They get together in groups and say, okay, we're looking at this data. If we manipulate this data at Uber or Lyft, we give the engineers these directions. They have to write the code to do this and this and this and we will make more money out of the driver. We have to constantly think of ways of breaking those algorithms. The worst about these algorithms is um, some, of the ride, some of the riders have access to the AI and drive a phone and will disconnect your phone where you will not get paid or get paid small amount for the long trip. 
Okay, Linda Hudson, I would love you to um, elaborate on that. Jay Beat says, there is a big furniture show going on now in North Carolina and customers complaining because they say they see 15 drivers, but none are taking their rides. Well, that goes back to the acceptance rates, Jay Beads. Uh, Ryan Millen's in the house, lift zone, suck you, log on, and they don't send you any trips. You end up wasting your time waiting and driving around. Now, driving around, you don't want to drive around and burn up gas, right? You want to be in a hot zone where it's busy or you want to move into a zone that's busy um, and, you know, capitalize uh, from, from the demands, right? You, you offering the supply. If the demand is in a certain area like Hollywood and you are five miles away, yes, it's worthwhile driving five miles towards Hollywood because the demand is high, right? Melina says, I've been waiting for like two hours for one ride now. Wow. And that's on a Sunday night. Now, um, if you... Okay, I want, I want to go briefly back to Jay Beats because we ran a video and I greatly, greatly appreciate the feedback that we got from hundreds and hundreds of drivers as far as like, I said, what is your acceptance rate, right? And, and what city are you in? What platform are you on? And, and it's, 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 it's astounding. It's amazing to me how many people participated and actually shared. Hey, I have a 16% acceptance rate. I have an 88% acceptance rate. I have a 5% acceptance rate. I have a 57% acceptance rate. So I'm going to work out all the averages with my team. And we're going to get some really cool data out there uh, based on city, based on national average. But as I said in that previous video, um, the acceptance rates are going down. And why, ladies and gentlemen, are the acceptance rates going down? It's because people are simply not willing to work for the offer in front of them. The offer five, six, seven years ago, I will guarantee you the acceptance rate was 90 to 100% because everything that they threw on you made sense. You would take it, you'd make money. Even in a 75, you're making a 75-25 split. The way that trip radar, the way that upfront pricing, a lot of people say, sorry, pass, doesn't make sense. Sorry, quick math, three, four, five seconds, doesn't make sense, pass. Quick math on the trip radar, doesn't make sense, pass. And guess what? The, the acceptance rate is going down. And a company that knows that the acceptance rate, and I see it in the numbers. We're going to talk percentages next week, right? I see it in the numbers. The acceptance rate is going like this. Less and less people are accepting rides. What are they accepting? They are accepting the rides that make sense to them, right? Sense, dollar sense, right? And it is the right way. It's the smart way to approach this business in these times, you know, post pandemic, right? In these times where they have cut your driver rates to a minimum, we have to become ultra selective. What do we accept? What don't we accept? So it comes to no surprise that the acceptance rate is ultra low. Now the companies know this. Why don't they act on this, right? Because I think that a low acceptance rate is a disaster for a company, right? It means not many riders are being, being uh, sent a driver because a driver will not go over there for that type of money, right? So you're creating disgruntled, pissed off riders, pissed off passengers, and the driver has to say, I'm only going to take what makes sense to me. So knowing that, knowing that data, they have that data, that our acceptance rate is going down and down and down and down. What do they need to do? Right? They're going to have to counter that. They're going to have to come up with something that starts pushing up the acceptance rate and that starts making riders happy again, right? They're analyzing the data. They analyze every little trip, every little behavior pattern by a rider, every behavior pattern by a driver. They are hyper analyzing and they're breaking down that data so that they can make a cent here and a cent here more. That is how these companies work. It is our job. I'm not like the dun, 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 not like a ghostbuster. But we need to think like algorithm busters. How do we break these algorithms? How do we chop them down, right? 
so that they don't have control over us. Rideshare Warrior, Rick says it was 60% before the pandemic with Uber, right? Thank you for that good feedback. We have 88 people um, in the house. I have 19 likes. I need likes. They look like this. This is what I work for. Why do I do a live feed on a Sunday night, right? I mean, I could be out there drinking wine. I could be uh, making myself a steak or, you know, some seafood. I do the live feeds to be with you guys, right? And, and smash the like button. The goddess key says, now Uber will not allow you to use the area preference if the acceptance rate is low starting in November, right? So, so punishing you because of a low acceptance rate, guess what? you are not going to be able to use the area preference, right? So this big announcement, oh, we have this area preference, right? And you think, oh, great, this is going to help me. I, I, I can put in my preferred areas. I can decide where it's safe, where it's not safe. Guess what? If you do not accept the trips that we give you, we will penalize you. So that is data that they are collecting and that they are holding against you, right? Tell me, where are you an independent contractor in the mix, right? How can you be an independent co contractor if that's their behavior? You have to learn the ways how to break down their analysis of our behavior patterns. If we behave in a certain way for five, six, seven hours a day in certain zip codes, Swiss cheese is in the house. I like Swiss cheese, by the way. Thank you for all your content. I'm a long time subscriber to give us. Love you back, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Swiss cheese. And you're making me really hungry right now because I love Swiss cheese with those big holes. Most delicious cheese out there. And by the way, when I was in Switzerland uh, two months ago, I, kinda, I, I ate some of the best Swiss cheese. I mean, we, we get Swiss cheese here on the counters. Talk about Swiss cheese, man. Edward Sisk is in the house. Scott Robertson's in the house. On my way to LAX. Private, make the money. Private is where it is. Private is where it is. Rusty says, thanks, you are making a difference. I appreciate you, Rusty. We are making a difference. Not I am making a difference. We are making a difference. I am not a one-man show. I am only as strong as the people that work with me. Mio says, at Reagan Airport, Washington, D.C., and the surge $8, the fare very low, the same trip I used to take from airports to DC with the same surge I used to make $22, now with the same surge I'm making 14 bucks. Jay Beats says acceptance went from 70 per Listen to this, Jay Beats, acceptance went from 70% to 35% on Uber. I refuse to deal with Lyft and it's below minimum wage nonsense. Thank you, Swiss cheese. Appreciate you, my friend. Jake Pippen says, RSP. Uh, Knight Rider says, Professor, putting him on game. So, I am only as strong as we are together, right? And, 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 I, and I really mean that, right? I mean, yes, I have a platform. I have a YouTube channel. But for me, every single day, interacting with you, reading those messages is learning, Right? I am not perfect. I am not the know-all. Definitely not, right? But, but interacting. Anderson Sampaio, we're working to get him reactivated. Teresa's in the house. Beretsky, I always appreciate your words. Thank you. Um, Death Hustle BTC says, LA driver canceller, canceller, cancellation rate. I can't even say that. I said canceleration rate. Cancellation rate is 56%. Listen to that. Cancellation rate is 56%. It means, right, I only accept 44% of what you offer me. The other 56% 56 56 is bullshit. Israel Duarte is in the house, right? And correct me if I'm wrong here, but if we had this discussion about the acceptance rate five, six, seven years ago, right? The majority of you, and correct me if I'm wrong, would be in the 80 to 100% acceptance rate, right? But because it's going down 
and down and down and because they are writing algorithms to extract more and more and more and because they're writing algorithms to charge the riders more and more and more our cancellation is going down eric says acceptance rate is 33 percent cancel is 15 percent and i make 38 an hour right so yeah, it's because you're working smart eric because you realize there are many, many trips out there, offers that they are giving you that don't make sense. Now, there are those desperados, sadly, right, that will pick up the trips that you decline because you will not accept a trip. It could very, very well be that on trip radar, somebody else thinks, oh, this sounds like a great offer. And there are truly people out there, sadly, sadly, every single day that will work for pennies and it's usually usually the people that have not been in the game for too long or really understand business because the fact is you have car payments you have insurance payments the biggest one you have gas through the roof you have maintenance you have taxes right and the people that are not looking at the entire picture and then just say oh I will take every little scrap I can take right mr. mr. and mrs. Desperado Right, there's many, many people out there, right? And I, I, I don't want to judge you because I hope it makes money for you. But in the grand scheme of things, in the big, big picture, ladies and gentlemen, it does not pay you to have a hundred percent acceptance rate. Oh, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this because in the grand scheme of things, as you are clocking miles, as you are running up your gas bills when you actually do the math you've got to ask yourself what am i making so yes it, it might sound attractive to you to take every little trip because this little thing adds up with this little thing and this little thing and this little thing and it comes out to a dollar amount where you think oh wow this is not bad i worked 10 hours and i made this but you drove so many miles you destroyed your car you spend so much at the gas tank. You're not looking at the overall picture. Jay says Uber's algorithm will not let you make over $35 to $40 an hour. It's all about miles and minutes and pay. Very, very true. Death Hustle says 47% acceptance rate. I make 2 k a week. It's because you are declining 53% of the BS, right? And the, um, uh, Edward, Edward Sisk asks a good question. He says, um, what's the excuse for taking so much? It's, it's pretty simple. When you have such high overheads as a company, you have these big executive offices in San Francisco and New York and these hubs and these supersonic salaries and these engineers and these analysts and these trash executives. When you have to maintain that insane overhead, insane overhead, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, right, each month, right, you have to, you have to take wherever you can because Dara still wants his $42 million. Nelson Chai and Tony West still want their $20 million. Those engineers still want their $250,000 a year, right? So they have to extract, extract, extract. Hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen, to all those, not ghost busters, but algorithm busters out there. Let's start thinking of ways we can break up the algorithms. How can we break up the algorithms? Break it up. Break it up. Show me the ways we can break it up. I want us to break up the algorithms ultimately so we can start making more money. Money. This is all about money. Deep Mastal, Abstract Echo 2, really, really legends in my channel that I, and Slick Nick, they're all three there. Jimmy, Abstract Echo, Deep Mastal, Slick Nick, um, three people that I, I really, really love having part of my channel. They've always been there. They always come with great feedback. They've done 
thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of trips and they've really helped. And these are, all, I think, all three California drivers helping other drivers in California. So it is the feedback of many of these subscribers that ultimately helps the new generation of drivers. We have to learn how to cut through all the bullshit, right? And really figure out or sometimes counter figure out how we make money in the wheel, right? Jay says, I turn the requests off while I'm on a ride. I like that because when you are turning it off, right, you are disrupting the algorithm. You're actually creating more of a demand, right? Because if, you, if, if we would all work together and sign out more often, it would basically send the signal to the data teams, hey, there are not many drivers on the grid. Now, we may be out there. We may be sitting in the neighborhoods, but we let's say we're off for five minutes and we're back on again and we're off. But we, we artificially create these surges or demand so that they have to pay more. Look, at the end of the day, we want to make money, right? And whatever we have to do, Liam says, use ride preferences to your advantage, right? So when you say that, Liam, please elaborate that. When you say use ride preferences to your advantages, for example, if you could just mention two examples. Yeah, I'm all ears. I'm always ready, ready to learn. So per IRS, driver cost is about 66, 60 cents per mile, which is pretty accurate. Um, isn't the charity, isn't the charity business that applies mostly for Ubrex, the miles a driver drives are much more than the active trips. That is true. Not really taking into consideration all these dead miles. Liam's in the house. Jimmy, good to have you here. Great to see you. Nick. Slick Nick says, my acceptance rate on Uber is around 40% now and in the 20s on Lyft. Sometimes when I keep declining, there are times surge kicks in. You see, let's listen to what Nick says here, right? You when, you when you keep on declining, if we work together and we break the algorithms and decline and decline and decline, the zones start heating up. The surges start kicking in, right? You get it? You get it? The surges start kicking in, the zones start heating up more and more red. You know, it's like boiling water, right? So we need to, I hate to say it, but F-U-C-K with their algorithms. F with their algorithms, right? Go on, go off, go on, go off. If we can just randomly start messing with the algorithms, we, what, what do we achieve, ladies and gentlemen? All these millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars that they are pouring into the analyst teams, pouring into the engineers, are broken up. They suddenly don't make the, the data doesn't make any sense. People are signing off, signing on, signing off, signing on. You are constantly breaking the algorithms, right? Don't be the person going forward that sits on the app. And even you, 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 you stop somewhere and you're waiting for the next trip, you remain on the app. Break it up. Has he or she stopped working? Right? Constantly break up the algorithms. They, they, they have it down to a science. They know what is the average time a person will log off for a pee break. What is the average time a person will log off to go and eat something, right? They've got this. We need to learn how to break it up. Sign off and sign on more often, okay? Another thing I really want you to start using more often is stop new requests. If you are on that last trip and you don't want to get any more requests, just stop it. Stop any new requests, meaning, oh, did he or she stop the shift? They don't know that. They think you're done. But then you switch back on again. See, you're breaking the algorithm. And then you stop new requests. And then you log back on again. Break up the data. F with the data. F-U-C-K with the data. Share the video, share the video, share the video, right? So that we can show people that, yes, we can influence the data. We can influence the algorithms, right? And is this guy like high on coffee? Is he crazy? What is he on Coke? No. I know I work with engineers. I know what data they look at. I know what data 
um, these guys have to produce for the companies and for the analysts, right? Because they break it down and they write the algorithms to extract the max. It is not hard to become an algorithm buster. It's a title we should wear on our shirts, driving clients. Well, I'm an algorithm buster. I, I, would, I would love a badge, you know, when I'm driving around. I'm an algorithm buster. Because when, if I'm an algorithm buster, it means I don't just bow down and tell and do what you tell me to do, right? I don't just like follow your protocol 24 hours a day and yes, sir, yes, sir. How much do you want me to swallow, sir? Right? No, bullshit. Break it up. Don't use the coffee break button. Okay, coffee break button. Coffee break button. Mess with the coffee breaks, right? Break the algorithms. Mess with the coffee. They have a coffee break button and they can figure out, oh, what time of the day do people go coffees on? Where do we need more? Where do we need less? Start messing around with the coffee. Go on a coffee break. Go on another coffee coffee break. Log on back again. Go on another coffee break. Stop new ride requests. Go on a coffee break. Log back on. Break up the algorithm. You follow me? Hands up if, you, if anybody's following me what I'm trying to say here. Hands up, right? Say yes, I, hands up, I follow you what you are saying. Go after coffee break, after coffee break, log off, stop new requests, have another coffee break, break it up. Are you following? Richard said means you are staying online. Jake, Jake Pippins gets it, right? Jake Pippins gets it. Jay Beats gets it, right? So if they have these little fancy schwancy buttons for us, right? Little, little cutesy, 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 cutesy little buttons, coffee break buttons, stop new request buttons, right? It's because what, what they are doing at the end of the day is that they are gathering the data of how he and she acts throughout the day. When do they go on a coffee break? What time does this person stop the new requests, right? No, what we do now, ladies and gentlemen, log in, lock out, coffee break, no coffee break, another coffee break, another coffee break, break it up, mess with their engineering department, mess with their analysts, right? These analysts will say, what the hell did this video just cause? Oh my God. Oh my Lord, what is happening to our data? All these millions of algorithm busters are screwing up our data. Yes, we got to screw up your data. Because the more reliable and the more you abuse the data, the more money you take from us, right? Flip it. Turn it upside down. Turn it on its back. I need coffee now, said Scott. I need a coffee right now, said as well, Scott Robinson. So, uh, I'll just get it. Hi, towards I'm three rides away from perfection. I saw this Maybach at Laguna Cliffs Marriott this weekend. I also caught a Pagani Huera also. I love your content and respect you more than anyone on YouTube. Eric, Eric, shout out. Got to make that Maybach happen. Um, Lauren says they'll limit our coffee break soon. Exactly. Exactly. So you start messing. Watch this. Good, good point, Lawrence. You start messing around with those coffee breaks. Maybe they'll, they'll, maybe they'll mess with our coffee breaks. But that's okay. Because what we're doing right now is we're going to say no. You're not going to, you're not going to use our data against us. You're not going to use rider data against the riders. You're not going to use driver data against the drivers? No. Dietmar says that the principle is to send you more far and more far. Sorry, my principle at $6 gas per gallon is to stay in my area. Slick, Slick Nick says if Dara, Logan and John don't give us our money, we throw them in the dumpster. Kevin Bayer says we need to put these companies in time out. Good point. Time out is like, if we want to time out, manipulate your app. Give yourselves a timeout. Oh, I'm going to stop my new request. I'm going offline. I'm going off online. I'm going offline. I'm going on a coffee break. I'm going back online. I'm going on another coffee, right? 
Give them these timeouts. Turn off the app. Yeah, turn it off multiple times. Turn it off. If you genuinely um, are going to spend five, six hours, don't keep it on for five, six hours. Andre Cat, they already do. Coffee break available again at 2.12 p.m. Got that the other day after using it a lot. Oh, really? So you can have a... You can have a coffee break. Now, they are telling you when you're going to have a coffee break. What the F-U-C-K is that about? Really, Darrow, are you telling me when I'm going to have a coffee break? No, I will tell you how often I'm going to. And maybe I'll go on 40 coffee breaks a day. Manipulate. Thank you, Richard Baltimore. Amen. Amen. Read what Richard Baltimore. Manipulate, manipulate, manipulate. They have been manipulating our data to take. Now we reverse it on them. We are going to manipulate their data. We are going to completely screw with the engineering department. We are going to completely screw with those analysts because they will not know. They will not know what's going on because we are going to act so randomly, right? The element of surprise. Surprise, I just hit that on the app. Surprise, I just hit that on the app. Surprise, I just went on a coffee break. Surprise, I just signed out. Surprise, I just signed back in. Surprise, I just stopped a new request. Surprise, I'm back online again. Surprise, I'm stopping a new. Break up their algorithms. You with me? Go on coffee break every trip. I love it. You see, now you're thinking. Now you are thinking how this team that met with me spoke to me. They said, Torsten, we're just looking at data and we're programming according to the data. You've got to disrupt the data. And I'm thinking, okay, if you are supposed to disrupt the data, what is the data? The data is what is collected from me, the driver, and from the rider. That is the data. That's the hardcore data, five-hour shift, 10-hour shift, Saturday night, Monday morning, data, right? We have to disrupt that. BPL Media says, don't keep this just to write your door. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Right. Don't keep this just to write your DoorDash, especially caps your earnings. Best example tonight in Philly with it being busy, somehow got no orders from 7 to 9.30 while Uber was booming. So you're absolutely right. You're 100% on the money. Right. Don't keep this just strictly to ride share manipulate the delivery data, right? And people, if you can bring me ways, and even if this just is an idea of yours, right? It doesn't have to be based on a proven fact, but even if it's just an idea, bring it to me so we can put it out and discuss it with the group. How can we break algorithms in food rights? How can we break algorithms in rights? And I'm going to tell you, a wild and wacky story. Here, here up. I have a very reliable driver in San Francisco that says, Dennis is in the house. It says to me, Torsten, I picked up an attorney in a Tesla. He's got a Tesla. I picked up an attorney at their legal offices. And that is at 1515 Third Street, right? Showed me, right? Showed me the screenshot. Picked him up. That is the legal office, right? And he had, uh, he watches my videos. I usually bring out a video in the morning, usually bring out a video at two o'clock in the afternoon and usually bring out a video. And I'm, I'm sharing this with you, right? Because it's just transparency. I usually bring out a video in the evening, 7, 8 p.m. Try to bring out three videos per day. That's my goal. That's my goal. My goal is 21 videos per week. That's my goal. I have goals. In everything I do in business, I have goals. So my goal is to bring out 21 videos per week. And he said that the attorney on his Tesla, he's got the Tesla Cross, the, the SUV. He said he saw the ride share um, professor screen on. And the guy goes, you watch this guy? The attorney said to the driver, you watch this guy? And the driver says, yeah, I watch all his videos. I learn from him. I interact with him. You know this guy? I've, I've, I've spoken in his live streams Really? He said, what do you think it would take for this YouTuber to go away? Now, when I say go away, it doesn't mean shoot me in the back of my head because they, they can try that, right? Good luck. Um, no, go away means 
And he said, I don't know, what, 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 what would you offer the guy to go away, right? And I said, well, I don't know. L listen, <clears throat> for me to go away, for me, as, as the person said in the discussion, to shut down my YouTube channel, for me to shut down funneling thousands and thousands of drivers into nine or ten law firms, right? For me to stop educating the public, for me to stop influencing your stock price, for me to stop striking and protesting. I, I'm a driver advocate. You, you turned me from the biggest recruiter that made them millions upon millions of dollars bringing them new drivers. You turned me into the biggest driver advocate that is empowering drivers to get money, whether it's through lawsuits or countering the bait and switch or fighting the algorithms, right? So I've gone complete opposite. I'm the first one to admit that. For me to walk away, and if this attorney is listening up, right, and if the driver ever meets that attorney again at 1515 Third Street, it would take several million dollars, right? For me to switch down, what I am doing right now would take seven, several million dollars because I can guarantee you I cost the company at least 20 to 50 million dollars a year. And you might think, well, that's exaggerated. That's crazy. Where did you get the numbers from? I will run the numbers for you. I cost these companies dearly, right? Especially when we start organizing strikes, protests, when we start connecting with the public, when we actually start holding up the mirror to their shenanigans, to their bait and switch, when, I, when we start funneling attorneys into class action lawsuits, it costs the company a fortune, right? I have fought now over 850 reactivation cases. Those are wrongful deactivations the way we fight to get the driver reactivated. 850 of those I fought. It costs the company a fortune. I cost the company a fortune, right? I will not stand for riders making up bullshit stories so that drivers get wrongfully deactivated. Let me, let me repeat that for the attorneys over there. Hope you're listening up. I will not stand for riders and passengers coming up with bullshit schemes and bullshit fake ways to get drivers deactivated. We fight it and I've fought 850 cases so far. So I have endless energy. I have a lot of resources and I've got a lot of good people. I don't have the thousands of engineers that you have, but I have really, I have access to really, really good attorneys, really good engineers, really good project managers and really good business people, right? Because the way these people are running the companies, it's a joke. It's a joke. It is an absolute joke. The way Dara Kosha Shawi, Logan Green, Logan Green and John Zimmer and everybody listen up, right? Their stock has plummeted so badly, so badly, right? So, so badly. What is this? I just got a video. And the driver says, yeah, I watch all his videos. I learn from him. He's, He's making coffee, him. baby. You know this guy? I've, I've, I've spoken in his live streams. Here we go. He's making the coffee. Scott Robertson in the house. Now, I want to remind you, Lyft, right? Lyft, where is your stock price? Ladies and gentlemen, Lyft is about to be bought out. I am thinking Amazon is going to buy Lyft or, and I'm just talking pure business right now. I'm thinking Amazon's going to buy Lyft or DoorDash is going to buy Lyft. Look at that. Look at that. Lyft is in the doldrums. It is down and out at 13 bucks. It's done. Mark my words, in the next 90 to 120 days, Lyft is owned by another company. It's coming. Amazon's going to buy it or DoorDash is going to buy it, right? Because they have so messed. They do not know how to run a company. Dara Koshashawi does not know how to run a company because all that these fools do is they hire a bunch of analysts and a bunch of engineers and they cannot 
speak to drivers or speak to delivery drivers. They pay people to extract from you, right? They have pissed off the riders with doubling and tripling rates. They have pissed off the drivers by taking over 50, 60% from the fares, right? They have destroyed their company from inside out. They done, they are done, right? And unless you start getting people that really understand business and know how to run a company and know how to talk to people and know how to empower their workforce, namely the drivers, these people are done. They have destroyed their greed, their ego, has destroyed themselves. Smash that like button, ladies and gentlemen. Smash it hard, 73. Let's get it up to 80. We're 117 people in the house. Di Guerrero is putting on the gloves. Who is Tyson Fury gonna fight next? We've got 118 people in the house, got 75. John says the only functional way to change the algorithm is to make it stop. How do you make it stop? You disrupt it. Make it crash. Thank you. Refuse so many rides, deliveries that the system crashes. Thank you, John. John, you get it. You understand it, right? Dan Barry's in the house. Don DeMarco's in the house. Joey Dirt, hit the like button, baby. Smash it on. Mogul Farmer says Uber is taking 50 to 60% of the fares. Exactly. Jay says, buy low, buy low, buy low. Buy very low, right? Good, good point, right, Jay? If you are buying Lyft shares right now, mark my words, Amazon's going to sweep in like a vulture or like a hawk or DoorDash, and they're going to buy Lyft up, and you're probably going to double your money. Dietmar Stahl says, Uber from all the trips available at one time picks the trips to where you denied it or canceled it to or where you don't drive their route, wanting to force you to go there. Israel says, did you hear about the Lyft driver killed here in Michigan a few days ago? Yes, shot in the back of the head. I made a video. Brutal. 19-year-old shot a 47-year-old lady in the back of the head, right? Passenger kills a driver, right? Why are these people on the, on, on, on the platform? Please, if the family can get us the GoFundMe, that's what we do. We raise money for the families. All right, now, I have a long, 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 long Monday. Um, I am super, super proud of the um, Minnesota group of drivers that really, really got the media involved and caused a big, uh, Uber and Lyft hate that. Right, they hate that. They hate that these drivers are rising up. Right, so if we can strike, we can protest, but more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, we have the ability to break up the algorithms. Please, I want your roulette wheels in the house. I want your suggestions. How can we break up the Uber and Lyft algorithms? How can we bust them up, right? Remember like a, a cube, you've got to bust it up, right? You can, you can take it all perfectly aligned colors and you can bust it up. That's what, they, that's what we need to do, right? In the ideal world for Uber and Lyft, they would like all the colors on each side, the yellow on the one side, the green, so that they can manipulate the data. We bust it up. Roy Watkins is in the house. Richard Baltimore is in the house. Anderson Sampaio is in the house. <coughs> Come up with the ideas how we can break the algorithms. Drive safe, you all, says Israel, exactly. Safety, safety, safety. Without safety, we don't stay alive. We don't make money. So safety, it's all about safety, right? Keeping ourselves safe. Please stay safe, right? And even like I say, if you have to go out and get your Glock, whatever it takes to stay safe. I've one of these at the house. I've one of these in the car. I also have a a rifle with sights. I did some shooting today. I shot with my kid, lined up a couple of targets from far away with the sights, shot them down, taught the kids how to shoot the rifle, shoot the gun. Now, I'm not going to teach a five-year-old how to shoot, but you know, my teenagers teach them how to shoot, right? So good luck to the person that tries to break a beer bottle on my head. Remember I made the video? 
Guy from the back tried to break a beer bottle on the driver's head. What is that all about? Pop goes the weasel. Pop goes the weasel. Pop goes the weasel. Right? Break up those algorithms, my friends. Break them up. Break them up. Right? Break them up. Let me, let, me, let me show you what we do, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you what we do. Let me show you what we do in this channel. We do crazy things. We do fucking crazy, crazy things. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, we do crazy ass things in this channel. I'm going to show you what we are going to do. We are going to get a little bit crazy right now. Crazy right now. A little bit crazy right now. Going to get a little bit crazy right now. You know what we're going to do? We are going to take the algorithms. We're going to take the safe off. The safe. You see the blades here? These are the blades that just chop up the algorithms. Break it up, break it up. Pop goes the weasel, baby. We're going to cut up those algorithms. We're going to chop them to pieces. We are going to chop them to pieces. Whatever they have going on, whatever the bullshit they manipulate, we are going to cut it up. We're going to slice it and dice it. Pop goes the weasel, baby. Chop it up. Come to me with your ideas. How do we break up these algorithms? Bring it. Bring it. We lit. We're on fire gonna light the fires come on guys let's do it let's do it let's break up those algorithms so Carlos always careful always be careful be safe be careful don't do stupid shit like the ride share professor but ladies and gentlemen please bring me the ideas how we can break up those algorithms I want to chop 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 choppity choppity chop Dara your little algorithms we're gonna choppity choppity chop we're gonna Cut them up and slice them up into little salami slices, right? Into little bacon slices. We're going to choppy, 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 chop, chainsaw style. Bring it. Chainsaw algorithm, baby. Let's cut it up. All right. So, my friends, happy Monday. Happy Tuesday. A new week ahead. I appreciate you all. God bless you all. Stay safe. Let's go out there. Let's make the money. Let's take the money, right? And let's figure out the ways how we can break up these algorithms, right? These algorithms. Very, very simple. Let's break up these algorithms. Had to kick, kick a couple of little trolls out there. Peace to you all and be safe. Please be safe out there, right? The main thing is be safe. Do not put up with their crap. I, I, I want to do something crazy right now. I want to do something crazy right now, but safety comes first. Safety comes first, right? But ladies and gentlemen, you know, you know, if you can take off the guards, right? Take it off, right? Get the blades out. Start chopping it up right? Start slicing it up, the algorithm. You know what to do, right? Because the one thing we are not going to do is we are not going to accept this shit anymore. We are not, ladies and gentlemen. So, break it up, break it up, break it up, break it up, break it up. Let's start making money. Let's start making cash. Love you all, and I will see you soon again. From California, LA, God bless you all, my friends.